So, herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge Jazz Rock TV Live am Montagabend. Haben wir es noch nie gemacht, oder? Am Montagabend <lacht> haben wir es noch nie gemacht, Georg. <lacht> Ein absoluter Wahnsinn. Und äh, tatsächlich äh, erwarten wir heute wieder einen Gast, wie ja. letzte Woche. Nämlich äh, Cody Carpenter, äh, der in Los Angeles sitzt und äh, uns hoffentlich gleich zugeschaltet wird. Das ist ja mega spannend. Ne? Also letzte Mal haben wir ja knapp aneinander vorbeigeschossen. Cody saß in einer anderen Zeitzone, war eine Stunde später dann da. Ähm, heute ist er hoffentlich dann gleich live, ja? um doch, die ne? Spannung noch ein bisschen hochzutreiben. <lacht> Ja, ich freue mich sehr, ich, äh, wie das geklappt hat äh, und wir werden gleich ein bisschen sprechen über seine, äh, aktu äh, sein aktuelles Album und auch die vergangenen Alben und was ihn so äh, mit Musik verbindet und getrieben hat, auch aus seiner Vergangenheit äh, und äh, da freue ich mich sehr drauf. Ja, und natürlich kommt sein Vater auch zur Sprache. Ja. Das lässt Wird sich nun mal nicht wegleugnen. Jeder, <lacht> jeder ist seines Vaters Sohn. Ja, so ungefähr. Soll man, soll man mal in Rinn lassen, würde ich mal sagen. Ja, natürlich. natürlich. So, uh, very warm welcome uh, to Cody Carpenter live from Los Angeles. Welcome <lacht> to our show. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for being with thanks. us. So you are in Los Angeles right now. It's kind of it's uh, noon, right? You know, you it's just you just had lunch or what? <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm going to have lunch after we're done here today. <laughs> okay, good plan. <laughs> so yeah. thanks for joining. You know, it's uh, good. Uh, Ralph just said we we had some hiccups last week, you know, but now we it's great to have you for a conversation. You you were following your music quite for uh, a while now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think we just I just explained in our pre-talk uh, that we got uh, informed or got aware about your music uh, when we got uh, informed by Blue Canoe Records in mm -hmm. 2018, I think it was. 2018, yeah, it was, it was yeah. your first mm -hmm. album release. And then right. following on that, you are releasing every year, right? Mm -hmm. Every year That's you right. have a new album. And the last one was uh, released in, correct me if I'm wrong, in April or March? I think, so, I think huh? yeah, we, I think we ended up releasing it in May um, uh, of this year, yeah. And it's... it's And uh, then later we found out that you are not uh, the son or a little brother of the Carpenters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> of, uh, Mr. Carpenter, who is a, a quite known uh, movie director and uh, movie movie music composer. So, uh, but but what we uh, found learned your music before that, and that was uh, kind of interesting because we liked it, and then we saw okay, why is he playing Halloween themes and and, and stuff like that, and uh, <laughs> said okay, there must be a connection. So, <laughs> yeah, most people find out about me the other way, find out about me through my dad and then listen to my solo stuff. So it's nice to hear it, it goes the other way too. Uh, I have one question I told a friend today that we have you uh, here live in, uh, in our web show. And he said, you have to ask him something. Um, and this is now the question. He's a real movie freak. So he knows <laughs> everything. And he asks, did your father keep any props from uh, the movie The Thing for himself. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure about The Thing. Um, he generally doesn't keep the props from his movies. Um, so I would most likely say no, but, you know, I'm not sure about that one. Mm. Um, 
it may be in a warehouse somewhere, some prop or something that he still owns. But honestly, I don't know. Sorry, I can't answer that. <laughs> Most likely one of these uh, fancy um, special museum places. I know that in, in Los Angeles, there's these fancy museums, you know, with collecting special stuff for, mm. you know, one museum for scary movies, for romantic movies or whatever. Most likely one of these places, you you will find that, right? <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, but, but that was in the beginning of the 80s, right? The yeah. thing Let's was. Let's see. The thing was. The thing was I 82, to, I think. 82, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. that's, uh, you know, all, all of this, these movies that your father, you know, gotten famous for, you know, were in that area. So was that, so, you know, I assume, you know, that was something, you know, permanently in your 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 grown-up face you know surrounded by this you know yes that's right so i um growing up you know my dad would have uh all sorts of music gear around the house um synthesizers and guitars and and basses and uh so growing up i was uh i was surrounded not only by the instruments but my dad would play me a lot of music that he loves and um, play me a lot of the movies that he loves. And so I kind of grew up with all of that um, at my dad's. So that, that, yeah. that kind of music was that, uh, what was, what was uh, the, the music, you know, not play, you know, not the, your father's music, so other music that your father were playing that influenced you? What, what was the type, you know, the kind of music that, that you were influenced in that age? My dad uh, was and is a big fan of the Beatles, um, big fan of ABBA, uh, you know, big fan of the Beach Boys. Uh, and a big fan of a lot of the music that, that uh, he listened to growing up. And so he would play me a lot of stuff. Um, um, and then on the other hand, at my mom's house, uh, she would play me the stuff that she loves. Um, she was more into kind of Broadway shows and the musicals um, and some other things. So I had a very, um, very eclectic uh, upbringing in terms of music and, uh, you know, some of it stuck, maybe some of it didn't, um, was replaced. But, uh, yeah. Some of it was replaced. Exactly. Yeah. But, you but know, when, when I try to, uh, play my children music <laughs> that I like, they tell me, okay, daddy, go away with your old fashioned <laughs> stuff and your jazz. Yeah. And so, you know, when we go on a longer trip in the car, we have a game that everybody can choose a song, you know, oh, yeah. Carter, yeah. then my son, my wife, and then me. And then uh -huh. I come up with uh, some Chikoria or Herbie Hancock uh -huh. <laughs> music and they want to shut it up. Uh, so <laughs> I have no chance to influence, to influence my kids. Did you like to listen to this music when your parents played it to you? Oh uh, Yeah, I, I guess every kid is different, right? Um, I, for whatever reason, I was, I was uh, willing to listen to anything that my parents played for me. I guess maybe there were some things I, I couldn't stand, but, uh, um, you know, honestly, I, I don't remember, but I guess every child is different. So I'm, I'm sorry to hear that about your kids. <laughs> uh, but, okay. but you're, you're I, a grown up. In I a never very, give up. Yeah. You What's a, that? I never give up. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> I'm still trying. <laughs> yeah. But, but you, you grew up in a very musical family, as you said, your father and your mother was also, she was performing in musical and Broadway stuff, right? And she was an, an right. uh, she's an actor. Also in these, mm -hmm. you know, horror movies, your your father did. So it's what well, music was all around, all kinds of music, I, I assume. Yes, and actually, my my grandfather, my father's father, was a professor, a music professor, at a university in Kentucky, um, and he played with the Nashville Strings. He played with Roy Orbison and things like that. Wow! So um, we have, you know, the music kind of runs in the family on on both sides my dad's and my mom's side but so but shouldn't we uh, give it a, a listen what cody is doing so that our listeners yeah of course uh, you know, probably I, can't I was, wait to hear something i was <laughs> thinking about it to to play something from your uh, latest uh, album uh to uh, introduce the music 
let's see. Um, the album is called, by the way, Memories and Dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. released this year in 2021. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so what should we choose here? Yeah, Cody, you have a preference? Um, let's see. What do you think about track number two is called Kindness yeah, of the Goddess? I was thinking about that. <laughs> I just want, I, I like the drum and, <laughs> and the bass flow at the beginning very much. It's awesome. I think that's a track. Uh, it's a five, five uh, and a half minutes track. And I think we, oh. we need to run it a little bit more than just one minute. But I was okay. also thinking about that one. Uh, let, let's listen to that. Uh, here we go. Awesome track. Um, so we now know that you are the keyboard player probably in this uh, on this <laughs> record and the composer. And can you tell us uh, about the other guys who were participating? Yes. So um, the you know when we did the first album in 2018, it really it started with I approached uh, Jimmy Haslett, the bass player, um, who I had. Uh, worked with before on some things that never went anywhere. And I, you know, I said, I want to, I want to, you know, do an album with real musicians because I had just been doing everything on my own, you know, with, you know, fake, uh, fake um, <laughs> instruments and things. It I mean, band, drums and the band camp releases, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I approached him and he said, yeah, I can introduce you to this guy. I can introduce you to this guy and this guy and this guy. So anyway, on long story short, on the most recent album, we have uh, Jimmy Haslip on bass. This track uh, that you just heard is um, Jimmy Branley on the drums. Um, also have uh, another drummer, Scott Seaver, uh, who he played uh, live with us on the tour with my dad, the band that we played. He, uh, that's where I met him. Um, and then on the final track on the album, uh, I, we have uh, Virgil Donati uh, playing drums. 
and I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to get him to play for one track on, I think, each of these albums. Um, uh, Jimmy Haslip introduced him to me. I was, I've always been a fan of, of Virgil's. He's just mm -hmm. an incredible drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, unbelievable, phenomenal. So what, um, yeah. What was that? You know, when you uh, when you get it. So I understood you have you knew Jimmy has lived from before, right? You know, so though. That's right. And and what was the? As you said, you had these Bandcamp releases, which kind of you know similar, you know, songs, but performed uh, all by yourself, right? You know, you played drums and uh, keyboards, bass, guitar. You know, you're performing everything. So what was what was the uh, The, the trigger, you know, that you thought, hey, let's let's do, you know, an album with, you know, real people performing and more. I think it's something compared to the Bandcamp stuff that in these tracks, they're also, you know, very well arranged, but there's pieces of solos, you know, where's more, you know, creativity and, you know, stuff that, that, that was developing while recording. So what was the trigger to, to decide, hey, let's do, let's do a real album? You know, it's really pretty simple. So we had just, um, all right, I had just finished touring with my dad and I had, I got some money. Uh, so I had, <laughs> I had enough money to, to hire real musicians. So I thought, you know, I might as well, I want to make something sound good. And I, you know, um, Jimmy's a legendary bass player and all these guys that he's introduced me to are all just incredible musicians. Um, and, you know, they really add, um, you know, I write everything and I, and I give them the music, but they add their own touch to everything. Um, and that's what really makes it what it is. I was, I was actually uh, thinking about, you know, because that the, the live touring was just happening in the two years, I think, before you released or in the same year. If, if I was right. questioning myself if that would be a reason, you know, because of the live touring experience playing with all the musicians. And uh, I found something on uh, on YouTube just to, to give the audience an example. You really played for huge audiences, right? Mm -hmm. We did. Um, yeah, we uh, especially I think the one you pointed out was Barcelona. That was Correct, yeah. I think that was the biggest one we did. Yeah. Yeah. I would just let's let's just, you know, maybe for you to remember. <laughs> uh, but that, that was a, an amazing clip, you know, to, to see, uh, you know, so many people cheering about about this, you know, instrumental versions of movie themes that was what it was about right and i think in That's this right. clip uh, i cho i was choosing a clip um where you can also see you i think it was a, a theme from the movie christine i mm -hmm. think i think it was but uh let, let's see a minute of that just to give everybody an expression Yeah, so there was big stages, big audiences, you know. What yeah, was what was the had, yeah. what, how how was the acceptance or the perception of the audience of this type of instrumental? It was really kind of fusion versions of, of their tracks. 
Yeah, you know, um, I think we were all pretty surprised at how much the audiences really loved it. Um, I don't, I don't know what we were expecting going out, but you know, it was the first time my dad had ever performed his music, um, and um, it was just awesome. It's just awesome to be able to play it for all the fans that you know really love love his music and wanted to hear it live, played by kind of a rock band kind of style, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, we arranged it all, and uh, it was great. We toured uh, the U.S. and a little bit of Canada, and then we toured Europe, and uh, and it was just it was great. And your daddy John uh, really delivers a cool performance there with <laughs> his that? keyboard. Your daddy <laughs> no, delivered he... a cool a cool performance. You know, he's really like. Yeah, he was acting yeah, he like, got a, we don't, like we a pop star. We know John Carpenter as a movie director, <laughs> yeah. but not as a, as a musical performer. And when you see him, you know, you see oh, of a musical um, uh, movie director, you see pictures, photos, you know, and you don't really see him perform. So that's uh, right. really interesting. Yeah, he, he really loved it. He loved, um, he loved the, 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 you know, the live um, connection with the audience, you know, mm. and uh, feeding off the energy and being able to perform. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he really, he really, I think he enjoyed it a lot more than he thought he was going to. <laughs> what, what did he, awesome. uh, because, you know, listening to that and your, your style of, you know, fusion that you were playing. So there's for sure, there's this relationship, you know, because of the music you have been grown up. What what was your father's you know comment of you know when you when he, he was listening to your first you know own, your own tracks you know is this something you can share? Yeah, um, you know, so as you can hear, the 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 music that I do uh, for my own stuff is is different, you know, from the music that that I do with my dad, and um, so my dad uh, listening to my music. Um, you know, I think he, he, he appreciates it as his, his son doing music. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's really into the music, but, uh, um, you know, that kind of thing, you know, it's, uh, it's just, it's a different, it's a, it's a different style of music, you know? Is, is there in, in your, when you, when you kind of evolved in your, your own music and, you know, writing your own stuff, What was your your inspiration, you know, to go into this style of progressive? This this is really progressive instrumental fusion or whatever we call it. But you're mm-hmm. also running your another project, which is more into, you know, singing and songs related. You know, uh, 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 you know. I think you released uh, two or three albums. I think. If I'm not mistaken, so yeah. it's on a different name, and but it's also it's kind of progressive, you know, influence. So, what was your your influence to go into this direction, you know, song wise and also instrumental? I, yeah, and uh, I think it was about high school when I I got really into Genesis and uh, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, and um, a lot of the '70s prog- progressive rock groups. Um, I got really into them. And that kind of took me off in a, in the different direction. Um, and then later on, I got really into like return to forever and, uh, groups like T square and, uh, things like that. Um, so those were kind of the big influences for me. Um, and so at the same time, while I love doing the, the instrumental stuff, which is, yeah, it's more kind of fusion stuff. Uh, I also have that spot with, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but, uh, it's kind of pop, uh, but sophisticated pop or something, little progressive elements. Um, so I wanted to do that, those, that kind of music as well. And so I released, I think we have, I have a three albums under the name Ludrium is the, yeah. is the name of that. Yeah. So that, that was yeah. also in parallel, right? I think the last album with Ludrum yes. was uh, 2019, I think. And at that time, you're releasing your second album uh, with the with the instrumental stuff. So it was kind of in parallel ways, right? That's right. You know, when I when um, I I felt like in at that time, you know, I was really inspired to write a lot of music. So I thought I should write as much as I can while I can because. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to write music, you know, um, 
uh, I know recently because of the, uh, you know, the, the pandemic and all this, my drive, my desire to write has gone way down and I don't write as much music as I used to. Um, it's probably happened to a lot of musicians, I think. Um, and I, and I thought that might happen one day. So I wanted to write a lot of music and a lot of different types of music. So I released a lot of music in those years. Mm. I heard that from uh, different musicians that for some of them was the pandemic was a blocker. They said, okay, I have time now. I'm going to sit down and develop all my ideas and stuff. And f uh, it never worked out. I don't know mm. why, you know. And for others, it was really a creativity push. And they could sit yeah. down and take their time, you know. It's different because uh, of uh, it depends on how... Um, you handled this pandemic feeling, which was also insecure, and you know, you didn't know what happens in the future, and so. And uh, but but uh, what interests me is uh, how is your way to compose songs? Are you sitting down and saying, okay, I'm gonna now write a, um, a song for Ludrium, or I'm gonna now write a song for my uh, uh, Cody Carpenter project, or are you? collecting ideas and then one day you go and say i'm gonna grab this idea now and develop it to a song what is your approach yeah it's i think it's a little combination of both um but generally it's all improvisation um which is sort of i i learned it or inherited it from my dad uh, very uh heavily influenced by just sitting down and just playing um and seeing what comes out um, or playing to an idea, um, there is a, whether it's a visual idea or just, just, you know, a concept or something mm -hmm. and just seeing what comes out and then structuring it, editing, editing it, um, or, uh, maybe taking a piece from one thing and putting it in another thing. So I don't really have a, a strict focus. Like I'm going to do an instrumental or I'm going to do this kind of eighties pop piece or something like that it just yeah, kind of yeah. whatever comes out and then i deal with it mm. yeah because i i think uh, the hardest thing to do is uh, to uh, having an idea is not that difficult it comes to you or it doesn't come to you mm -hmm. but then developing that idea and as you said you structure the song and you maybe mix this idea with this idea and then that is really hard work that is uh, the work of an uh, of an artist and does it come easy to you or do you have to um, sometimes motivate yourself and say come on let's do it now yeah you know that's the it used to come really really easy but like i said nowadays it's it's weird uh, you know i'm one of those people that for whatever whatever drives me the the pandemic has has really dampened that drive um and so it's nowadays it's just it's taken more time and it's harder for me to get ideas going um but i think hopefully now that things are getting better i'm hoping that you know the fire will be rekindled soon that's what i'm hoping anyway i'm sure it will yeah, sure. yeah. Let, sure. let's hope the other the other fire in your area will not be dramatic. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's one. Next, I don't next, want those fires. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are no good. <laughs> But as you said, so the 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 80s listening, you know, also to your sounds, your keyboard sounds, and you know the the stuff from the 80s, also sound wise, seems to be a big you know influence uh, mm -hmm. in your style of you know you know sound whatever we call it, universe, you know, in, in everything mm -hmm. that you released, you know, we can hear that this is 80s influenced. So where, where, where is this coming from? That's a good question. I don't really know. Um, for, I, you know, I have really nostalgic feelings for the 80s. Um, and I just, I love the aesthetic. Uh, I love the synth sounds. You know, I, of course, I love the the sounds from the 70s as well but for whatever reason the 80s seems to overtake that love for me um uh you know i wish i knew why i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and that that's i i saw uh if, if i'm not mistaken i saw that you also uh do did some music stuff for video games and 
this mm -hmm. is area, even some other video game or game related stuff. Is this also because of the relationship with 80s and all this? You know, in the 80s, you know, video games or uh, computer games that was completely different from today. You know, I was grown up at that yes. time. You know, we were used to, you know, eight colors on the screen and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. all this stuff and all these big pixels and uh, the computer sounds. Is, is this something that influenced you in your in your early age? Absolutely. I, I grew up uh, playing video games like all the time. Um, Uh, some of my earliest memories are playing video games. So, I, you know, a huge influence musically on me, um, uh, aesthetically. A lot of a lot of my instrumental songs now sound like video game video yeah. game soundtracks from from a long time ago. You know. Well, I think that's the interesting. At least for me, that's the interesting. Uh, some of the, the int very interesting parts in, in your releases is this mix of, you know, you have Jimmy Haslip playing, you have Virgil Donati, and, and then this keyboard sounds, which is, you know, kind of from the 80s, transformed <laughs> in a, you know, progressive fusion in 2021. So that's an, a very interesting mixture, I think. You're feeling the same? Yeah, I, um, it, it's, it's, When you think about it, it's a little strange, but it's really just an amalgamation of whatever I like and whatever I'm influenced by. I, I can't really filter into one thing. Like I can't do only, you know, progressive rock like Emerson, Lake and Palmer or something. I can't only do fusion. I can't only do video game music. It all just comes together in I, I can't help myself, you know, <laughs> That's, it just happens. I think there's, there's, there's one thing, uh, at least for me, but, which I really, in this, you know, instrumental fusion, I really like this groove parts, you know, this unisono playing, you know, and this, mm. you know, with a, with a certain, you know, drum groove. And I, I found a clip um, on internet where you were playing with your father's band. I think it was developed when you were doing this live thing um with with all these parts which kind of was the same you know you in in these clips you mm. also did this you know grooving you know unisono groove parts um uh, so i i was assuming that's something that you like your father like and that that's why it came out with this uh so i was talking about distant dream mm -hmm. i think it's the track uh we talked about that earlier uh in preparation i think it's from your father But you played it in a in a studio setup with the same musicians you played live, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, so we released uh, three albums. Uh, the Lost Themes is the series of albums. Um, they're a new material that uh, is written by my dad, myself, and Daniel Davies is the third member. He's a guitar player um, that we all wrote together. Um, and Distant Dream was, I think it was the single from Lost Themes 2. And okay, uh, yeah. we, we, yeah. But we it was, not, it a, it was not a movie, uh, not a movie uh, theme or something like it. This was uh, never released before, right? Let's, That's correct, yeah. Uh, if you like, you know, let's have a look on that one. Yeah.
awesome, awesome <laughs> video. <laughs> yeah, it's a great video, and it, it, it yeah. you know, whatever what we have been talking about, you know, this grooving stuff, then the drums play along. This is stuff you we can also hear on your records, right? Yeah, and actually, that that drummer Scott Sieber played on a lot of my records, and the first record we released was uh, mixed by the bass player John Spiker in that video. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And was your was your uh, daddy involved uh, in the making of the video? In film? Um, let's see. You know, I don't remember exactly. I'm sure he had some ideas. Um, yeah. At least you know, honestly, what I, I don't found on, uh, what I found on internet, he was kind of di directing it. So. Okay, there you go. Yeah. You probably know more than I do. I don't remember. <laughs> there, there are some great camera movements, which reminded me kind of of some uh, of his uh, movies. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, extraordinary, I think. Yeah, cool video. And I like this rock part. I mean, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, so all that music we wrote, the three of us. Um, mm -hmm. So we all, you can hear kind of the influences of, of the, our, the three of us together on a lot of that music. Yeah. So what are your next plans? Now next plans. Um, the album is out. And uh, is there any chance in, uh, in the US to go on tour or something like this? Um, yeah. You know, I would love to play, you know, we talked about this uh, before, but I, I've never played my music live. Um, you know what? Actually, that's not true. Uh, I did play it one time live, but this was a long time ago. Um, and that is a different It was a story. different so experience. I, I, yeah. <laughs> a very different experience. So I'm not even going to mention that. But anyway, um, I haven't played this stuff live uh, with, you know, uh, a real band or anything. Uh, but I would love to. Um, and I, it would be great. It's uh, it's a matter of, you know, money and um, and getting the musicians together. Um, uh, so a logistical kind of stuff. I would love to. I have no plans to, though. But uh, I think we, we talked about that with some other other people in the past, you know, about this type of music, which is. You know, we, we, we always say this is kind of the niche of the niche. You know? it's, <laughs> so it's yeah. uh, the, the, there's there's most likely not the big audiences. And uh, we talked about before before we were live, you know, about uh, the, the small club uh, you're living close to the bacon potato, where I've mm -hmm. been a lot of times seeing super great people, you know, that, that were my heroes playing for, you know, 20 people. Exactly. So, Is this something, especially in, in the Los Angeles area, where most likely there's a shitload of amazing musicians, everybody wants to play for his own instrumental stuff that might be hard to find a spot to play whatever, you know, this kind of music live. Is this, is this kind of... I, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's being in LA, it's like there's just so many amazing musicians here. Um, uh, you know, actually I, I saw Virgil Donati and his trio at the baked potato, uh, with, um, junior Boaguin Hua, I think is, I'm not sure I pronounce his last name on bass. Um, and they were just unbelievable. Some of the, some of the most amazing live, the most amazing live performance I've maybe I've ever seen. And there were maybe 15 people in the whole club. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, it's just the, the type of music is not mainstream and uh, it's unfortunate because it's just uh, it's, that that show was amazing. But anyway, um, yes, there's there's too many unbelievable musicians uh, out there, especially in L.A. who, uh, you know, don't don't. Uh, right. You have to yeah. come to Europe. Yeah. You have to yeah. Come to Europe. <laughs> Where, yeah. uh, Jeff Jeff Lauber once told us in an interview that he uh, likes to come to Europe because he gets some some audience. Even a, a <laughs> star like him, you know, uh, says there are not so many venues in in the U.S. where you can play jazz rock fusion. You know, mm. so they came yeah. over with this great band with Eric Marienthal and uh, Jimmy Haslip, of course, and they played here quite a bit. You know, 
So that yeah. is uh, that is a possibility. I think, I it's think much, that... you know, it's much more cultured over there. We don't we don't have any culture here. It's uh... no, we, no, we, <laughs> we don't we don't have <laughs> culture either. But, <laughs> but but I heard I heard from many people that uh, that in Japan that's even even more. So they are they are even more willing to listen to whatever music and uh, you know if you play with the fusion progressive fusion or whatever uh, you know, type of band in Japan you will be you will have a packed audience uh, <laughs> as you were saying earlier you have a relationship to Japan uh, yes. is, is this your perception as well yes so I've been I've moved back and forth between LA and Tokyo uh, for many many years now um, and actually that the one performance that I said that I that I actually played my music live was actually in Tokyo. Um, mm. They, uh, you know, the audiences are, are more receptive, I think, over there to that kind of music um, for whatever reason. Um, I know Jimmy uh, has some, he goes over there and plays a lot. Um, I think he just, he mentioned that right before the pandemic, he, he was scheduled to, to, to play a bunch of shows over there and they all got canceled you know, um, which is really unfortunate, but yes, you're right. I think they're very receptive over there. I, I think, but that, that it does not only, it, it's not only for fusion and other stuff. I think in general, they are more open to all styles of music. You know, I, I don't know why I, I know mm -hmm. somebody from, from my hometown, uh, she's a, you know, singer with kind of dance floor stuff, mm -hmm. you know, in Germany, only a few people know her, but in Japan, she's a superstar, you know. Uh, <laughs> nobody knows why. Uh, yeah. I think that's, I don't know, but these people over there, they are kind of more open, uh, have a wider hor horizon. I don't know how to explain, you know. Uh, yeah, you're right. They appreciate, I think they appreciate more, um, a more variety Uh, different styles of music and they appreciate high level musicianship as well that's right and and coming back to your albums you know at least the four albums uh, that you released on blue canoe records um they have the same you have the same artist doing the cover mm -hmm. work and that as far as i understood it's also somebody from japan is this somebody you personally know and you have a relationship and and that's how it happened Yes. Um, so I was introduced to him. Um, uh, he goes by the art artist name of Mizo in English. Um, he was introduced to me by a Japanese friend of mine who I've done a lot of work with, and he, he was close friends. And this artist, um, he spends a lot of his time in Nepal, in the mountains, um, and just drawing. You know, his, his artwork is so detailed. Uh, it's really hard to see it like on a screen, but when you see the, the piece, the artwork in person, just the amount of detail that goes into it is, is just amazing. But he spends a lot of time uh, to just do one piece. Um, uh, and he's an amazing artist. Uh, so I, I was, I've, I've been really lucky to, to be able to work with him and have him do the cover for each of my albums. I think it's nice to oh, see the, cool. you know all the albums in the same style and you see mm. you know mm. your 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 way in this and uh, also musical you know on the, the music is very related but uh, I think as you said you know Jimmy Haslip is on every album mm -hmm. um, as you said you know he's just a phenomenal bass player was that also an inspiration to explore different areas because knowing we, we know jimmy haslip since how many 10 years or 12 years or something like that and uh, we talked to a lot of people and jimmy haslip was always you know a big source of inspiration for many musicians you know is this something that you experienced Yes, absolutely. He's, he's amazing. He's an amazing musician, but also just an amazing person. Um, and uh, knowing that he's going to be able to play on some of my albums, I write the music a little differently, you know, with him in mind. Um, uh, in fact, we're working on his parts now for the next album, um, oh. which will be released next year. Hopefully um, he's uh He's playing, I think, on 
eight tracks for the next album. Uh, sometimes I use uh, synth bass and uh, some of the tracks don't even have bass, but uh, we, uh, we're, we're working on that right now, actually. Do you write out the part for Jimmy Haslip or do you say, Jimmy, here's the groove, here are the chords, <laughs> do what you like? It depends on the song. Sometimes I'll write out the charts, um, but generally he doesn't even need them or use them. Um, and uh, I just let him kind of do what he wants, uh, you know. Um, but uh, in, in fact, he he just emailed me and said, uh, he, he sent me some tracks for the new song and, and uh, he hadn't received my charts that I had sent him anyway. He didn't even need them. It's like, mm. uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny. He, I think so, he had a great so talk, ear. Talking yeah. about that, do you have uh, a track from your last album or even the albums before uh, that you have in mind with a you know great collaboration between you and Jimmy that we should listen to? Oh, let's see. Off the top of my head, um, he's got a couple bass solos. Uh, let's see if I can remember which songs he does. Oh boy. I was I was uh, uh, checking uh, from your album Control is emo yes. emotional is one of them I think can that be um, is that is that's the is that the Virgil song yes yes uh, <laughs> I hope uh, I hope because I, I was pointing I out hope that so one too. to prepare <laughs> to prepare but uh, I And hope I'm I hope I'm right. Let let's listen. So that's from your last album from uh, last year uh, called Control. Uh, and as you're saying, uh, you know Jimmy Heslip on bass on that album. Uh, you had Virgil Donati and the other guys. I think Jimmy Branley, he, he's also a, a, a super phenomenal drummer. Uh, yes, is, he is. This, is this a contact you uh, you uh, got got connected with Jimmy? Uh, you know, via Jimmy Heslip, or you know the guy before? No, um, Jimmy introduced uh, him to me. Uh, they had played together in a trio, um, uh, and I actually I saw them again at the Baked Potato. I saw that trio play, <laughs> and uh, and I, and so I was looking to get another drummer for that album for control for i think for two tracks he played um and so he he introduced me to him and then uh jimmy branley ended up because he's also uh he, he also mixed the album and mastered it um and so i've been working with him as a mixer as well and uh i'm planning on him doing that in the next album these, too. these guys can do everything i was <clears throat> yeah, i really like this you know I, i really like to discover this these guys you know sometimes you get a name you never heard the name before and then you start googling and they say oh holy shit you know why, why yeah i haven't <laughs> heard about this guy before okay yeah. let, let's uh let's listen to it so uh, the, the track is called emotional from your album from last year it's called control
<laughs> Most likely wow. will take another two minutes to, for the solo to appear. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? And I'm sorry, I was wrong. That that track is actually not Jimmy. That's ah, uh, Junior. <laughs> That's um, yeah. Anyway, it's awesome. That was, That's an awesome your, track. Your, keyboard, your, your synth solo really took me back to the 70s. That was really, oh, okay. you know, like <laughs> like uh, I don't know, like Genesis, the early Genesis, or, or something like that. That's great, awesome. How do you guys record those those songs? Do you are you, are you going together in, into a studio, or do you uh, present a demo or some basic tracks, and the other guys play uh, their stuff on it? Yeah, so what I do is I, I write out all the tracks and I do a demo version of it with uh, just, you know, uh, program drums and program bass and stuff like that. Um, and then I will just email the guys, uh, you know, isolated tracks and uh, different mixes and things like that. And it's all remote. We And we're never in the same room. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, they record their tracks and we send them back and forth and then I'll give notes or, or maybe no notes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically how it works. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It sounds really tight. But, but, but. <laughs> My and, goodness. And, and, and not, not easy. Not yeah, I was, just, stuff. Th I was <laughs> just thinking about that, especially for the track we just heard with this very complex drum groove and then the, the bass part you know going over it is this something you really you know programmed in advance or that was kind of a surprise thing when maybe the drummer come back with hey what do you think about this well specifically for virgil's tracks um you know he does he does his own thing so i the original demo i had the drums were very different um but you know the reason why i I love working with these amazing musicians as they add their own element to it. And so he came back with, with what you hear. And it was just, it was just amazing. Um, same, same with all the bass parts. Um, uh, I think on that album, I played most of the guitar. Um, I think um, recently I've had uh, this guitar player, Marcos Swobley. I was, I was um, just about to, to ask you about that one. Yes, <laughs> because you, so he, he, as you said, you, you're playing all the stuff, you know, really, you, I saw some pictures from you playing drums, a keyboard as well, but, you know, bass and guitar, you know, but then you invite, you know, also great guitarists like this guy, you know, tell us about how you found him and how, how did that happen? So he was actually through Virgil. Um, I asked him um for his track, I, uh, the track, I'm sorry, the track that Virgil's playing on, I asked him if he knew a guitar player that he would prefer to play on that track instead of someone that I find. Um, and so he recommended Marco and Marco is just incredible. Um, so in fact, for the next album that I'll be releasing next year, I'm getting Marco for, he's going to play guitar on the whole album. So, uh, oh, he's really? all over the place. Yes. So that, um, that most likely so, means that the next album will be even more heavy fusion than, than <laughs> the albums before. I think that's what I, that, as I said before, you know, this is a typical example where I saw the, when I saw the name, uh, I hope I pronounce it correct, it's Marcos Goli, what was the correct name to? Yeah, you know, I don't know the pronunciation Um He's Italian. Yeah, he's um, Italian, so it's... Uh, yeah. But he, he plays on one track, and that track is an amazing track. As you said, it's a virtual to not unit, and it's it's a little bit more heavy, let's say, like this, as, as the other tracks. So we can expect uh, more of this style on your next album, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more guitar on the upcoming album, that's for sure. It, there's a little bit more heavy guitar. Um, but at the same time... Um, it's not going into metal territory or anything like yeah. that because I'm not, I'm not super familiar with that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, so we have Marco on guitar and then for drums. So for the next album, I decided to just, I wanted to have one drummer, uh, one bass player, one guitar player and myself. Um, a band. so for to prepare, a band, yeah. To prepare for the live, to prepare for the live. <laughs> I, that would be awesome. Um, so, so the drummer I'm getting for the, the next album is uh, Gergo Borlai. I don't know if you're familiar Holy with shit. him. Holy shit, yeah, of course. <laughs> I think he's, he's living in Barcelona, right? 
That's correct. Yes. Yeah, he's um, a phenomenal drummer. You know, we we uh, we 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 reviewed his last record. You know, a few months ago. He's mm -hmm, crazy. That's right. Yes, he's. It's. Uh, I, I I have to say the the new album that's from next year. I think it's going to be my favorite out of my music. Um, I'm really happy with how it's turning out right now. Okay, awesome. we, How is the communication going between you guys when you receive a, a track from Virtual Donati? The email is popping up and you're saying, oh, yeah, it is. When you listen <laughs> and you say, hmm, what is this? Can you then go back and, and, and tell him and let him know, okay, Virtual, I had a completely different idea and this is not oh, my no, song. No, no. And no, can no. he tell you, Cody, the last song you sent me, I don't know what to do with this, uh, throw it away or whatever, I play it with some other guys. Is it going like this or are you always accepting what's coming in and uh, are the other guys accepting your compositions and yeah. no discussions? <laughs> really, you know, honestly, not a lot of discussions um, you know, because I, you know, I'll send the demo. So they have a very clear idea of what I want and so for example, with Virgil on, um, I believe on that track that we just heard, he sent me, he sent me the, the, the rough drums and they were awesome. They were amazing. And, uh, and I think he had a solo and then he came back a couple of days later and said, here's another solo, which I feel is better. Um, so it was really, I just left it up to him. Um, he, I thought his first solo was great too, but then he came back with an even better solo. Um, mm. so it really, I, you know, honestly, these guys are so amazing. I don't have, there's nothing for me to say. Um, cause what they do is just, it's just so great, you know? Yeah. And when they're developing their own ideas to make it even better and say, okay, listen to this, or here's a new Hyatt for you. I tried out this one. Or yes. So. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's awesome. Then it's a yeah. creative process, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Great. Great. So, uh, we talked so much about it. Uh, if you don't mind, let's have uh, listen a minute to. I think that the call, the sound, uh, the song is called "The Grind," right? That's the mm. one. Oh, yeah. That's the one from your last album, uh, featuring uh, Marcos Foley, whatever. Foley, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and that that has Jimmy on the bass for sure. I know that. Okay, good. So we we made the turn. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, let's listen to this as well. I think it's uh, it's an amazing amazing track. That's awesome. Yeah. I really, I really <laughs> like this style of, as said before, the unisono, groovy part of stuff. Mm. That's what I was mentioning with heavy, the, the more heavy style of, you know, guitar playing. Um, that's really awesome. You know, looking forward mm -hmm. to your next release. 
Yeah, Marco is amazing. Um, but you know, he's he doesn't he's not limited to that heavy style too. He's he's very uh, he has a variety of styles and uh, he plays lots of cool stuff on the new album. That's something that you always discover uh, with Jimmy Haslip. You know, uh, since I uh, you know Blue Canoe Records is sending us all this stuff because I think he has also a relationship to that. A record yes. label so he's playing on a lot of songs you can i i even got some kind of you know pop dance songs you know with jimmy playing on it you know which mm. and giving it a, a special very special you know jimmy haslip tone and 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 vibe so this guy is also you know so open to music and whatever comes across that that's always great to see Yeah, he's he's played on so many records with so many artists. Um, he's had a really long, amazing career, v very variety of styles. That's right. I have a, a, a keyboard player nerd uh, <laughs> nerdy question. Uh huh. When, I, when we listened to the last track, there was an organ, yes, basically playing. Yes. How do you know what's the right sound is for, for this track? Are you trying out organ versa, let's have a polysynth or some kind of piano or clavinet type of sound? And is it just, uh, do you have, uh, do you know it before? Or oh, that's an organ sound, uh, sounding track, or mm. is it lots of, you know, as a keyboard player, you have millions of sounds available. What is mm -hmm. the right one? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think it depends on the song. Um, sometimes I'll actually, the, the song will come about from the sound. So I'll be, I'll be just improvising, playing around with a sound and the song will come out of that. Um, in the case of this song, um, you know, the Hammond organ is maybe one of my favorite keyboard instruments. Um, so, A lot of the songs I write start with the Hammond. Um, and uh, in this one in particular, I think there was no question it was going to be anything else. Um, but, you know, it depends on the song. So sometimes I'll, I'll just write something on the piano and then I'll just I'll try it with different instruments, see what sounds good. Um, just kind of a, a trial and error process, you know. Is is the the but well, the piano is an instrument that you was beginning first to play yourself, and then the other instruments yes. was kind of exploring areas. Or how did you educate and get in in you know influenced by instruments? Yeah, I started with <clears throat> piano with the keyboard, um, and then I think I went to guitar next, and then drums. Um, but to be honest, I'm not very good at, at drums or guitar or anything really. <laughs> um, I can kind of play the keyboard the piano. I'm okay. But, uh, you know, all these other musicians make me sound way better than I am. So <laughs> I saw, uh, you know, I, I think last week when I explored some stuff about uh, the music that you played and, and also with your father, I think I, I, somewhere I saw a statement from your father about, the. Uh, the music that uh, he was saying, yeah, yeah, I do the melody and Cody is doing all the, <laughs> the complicated <laughs> and the, the other stuff, you know? That's... Yeah. Um, he, he likes to just give me all the, all the playing parts, you know, uh, he, he prefers, he's, you know, he's the director. He likes to, you know, give the direction you do this and uh, which is great. Um, so Uh, if there's a difficult keyboard line or something, he'll just, he'll give it to me. And, and uh, when we're playing live, that's basically, that's basically what we do. What's, what a point in your, you know, when you grow up and started to think about what do I do with my life? You know, what, what a point you thought about, hey, hey I need to be a, mu a movie director or an actor or something in that, you know, direction of your, your parents Did you, you know, thought about that as well? You know, I never did. Um, I never had any desire to be an actor or, or a director. I don't know why. Um, um, I just kind of went with the flow of, of life, uh, you know, 
And uh, I actually, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't even really uh, plan on becoming a musician either. Uh, just kind of things just ended up that way, you know. Um, and I'm just very lucky, very fortunate enough to have the opportunity, you know, and to be able to play. Um, uh, so it just kind of worked out that way, you know. And nobody pushed you like, hey, you need to become, you know, like the, your parents pushing. Yeah. You. But uh, did they you weren't like that. Yeah. Did your, your parents push you to like, you know, hey, you need to learn something serious, you know, go to, uh, you know, learn some. Go and know. practice yeah. the piano now. <laughs> But You know, I think it's because, you know, my dad, um, so his father was a music teacher. And so my dad um, has a very different outlook on, on music. He's not, he's not kind of the disciplinarian, you know, you have to practice and uh, you have to work at it. He's kind of the opposite, you know, it's just kind of do whatever you want kind of idea. Um, so that, that kind of had more of an influence on me. Uh, I was very bad at practicing. I, I never, I just, I just preferred to just play, you know, whatever, whatever feels good, you know. No, it's a, it's the best approach. <laughs> Maybe your yeah. father is a, is a musician mm -hmm. who uh, by accident did some very successful <laughs> yeah, movies. Now, yeah. yeah. Because some nowadays he's that. still doing, he's still doing music. <laughs> you know? And uh, the last film is a while ago, I think, you know? Yeah, it's as a director. The yeah, last yeah. film was uh, it was a while ago. Um, he's he's both, you know, he's uh, he's an uh, amazing director and an amazing musician. So Is there any plans? And he know, scared to... the shit out of me with the fog. <laughs> My goodness. Were you allowed to see those movies when you were a child? I mean, you were born, I don't know. I think after mid-80s, mid right? 85? 84, and, yeah. Uh, 84. And uh, were you allowed to see those movies when you were like a six, seven, eight years old? Or You know, I they... don't remember really. Probably not, but I, I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, are there any plans, you know, to continue with this, uh, with these live shows and, you know, movie themes and performing it? Uh... I don't know. You know, With the, the, the virus, everything's changed. Yeah, everything um, is on hold anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no nothing solid. Um, I don't know. I honestly, I really don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. We don't know what yeah. happens with yeah. Delta variation or Gamma. Right. I even heard Gamma <laughs> is now coming up and we don't know if the vaccination is uh, durable or how do you call it to that and um, if you had to yeah. find a new vaccination yeah. whatever it will keep us busy for the next years i think yeah yeah for sure but it's good to good to hear that uh, also you are still looking out for more music last next year you know trying to to you know find your way through all this you know pandemic and mm -hmm. other you know influences yeah. that we have It's good to see. It's always good to see that people look forward and you know have their vision, you know, to do to to move. And I think that's that's at least you know the best thing that we can do, rather than just yeah. sitting back. Oh no, no, you know, what mm. can I do? Yeah, you know, and it's uh, so we are really looking forward to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> to the next album in 22. <laughs> 22 yeah. and hopefully then we are uh, you know as as we said earlier you know baked potato is my favorite place at least for one time a year last year you know i needed to quit you know my vacation this year mm. most likely you know i will not do but i'm really hoping to be at the baked potato next year and then seeing yeah. you live with your band you know <laughs> that's a, maybe that's maybe a you can see uh <laughs> Yeah, maybe Jimmy and I, we can play at the Baked Potato and you can come to see us oh, play. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I will be there yeah. whatever it, uh, <laughs> it cost me. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to go there too. Georg is going, yeah, we... as long as I know him for 20 years, something like this, he's going every year in October, he's going to LA. That's his vacation. Yeah. No place else good in the place, world, you know. Los Angeles. <laughs> the weather's I good. I was there once. Yeah, weather is good. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, 
Yeah, let's let's uh, look forward. You know, I think that's the message, right? Let's look forward. Right. It's good to see yeah. that people like you, you still look forward, um, which is good to see. Yeah. Great. So thanks a lot for this amazing talk about your music. Oh, thank you. That was really cool to to have all these insights. Uh, you know how you develop music, how you grown up with music. Uh, in this amazing music family, uh, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Thank you very much. So stay creative. Don't let the pandemic or yeah. the heat or whatever comes up to Los Angeles right now uh, make you stop doing what yeah. you like. Uh, just keep on doing it. We're looking forward to it. You know. Yeah. It's got to keep going. Thank you. <laughs> Keep on rocking, man. Keep on rocking. That's right. I think uh, we decided to uh, do another outro with your music uh, rather than yeah. oh, okay. playing our theme again. Um, but again, thanks again. Uh, it was great to talk to you. Um, what the great insights. We are looking forward to next year to seeing more of your great music. And I think, you know, right. uh, I think we shared the Blue Canoe record link and also your links this is the place where people can find all your albums i think also as we mentioned earlier there's the band camp site we will share the links in the show notes to find all your stuff uh, that you that you released on band camp all the what you explained you know the pop more pop related um uh, albums so that that people can find everything and 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 purchase it I think it's we are the right, music great. super spreaders. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's <laughs> spread the good music. That's what we why yeah. we are here. You know, we enjoy it. You know, why should not no not other people enjoy it? You know, it's so great music. All right. So, what Thank are we you. listening to? I think uh, I forgot the name of the track. Sorry about that. I, I, you know, this is the ending of our live stream. Thanks, thanks again. Uh, this is a track from uh, your latest album. Um, All the best uh, to Los Angeles from Germany. All right. Thanks for for your time. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks and bye bye.